Here's my idea of a jump start into Google Forms for student evaluation. To create a form, go into your Google Drive, click New, More, and then Forms. To make this super quick, I've already actually created the form. One of the things you have to remember is to make sure you change it from untitled to something that makes sense to you so you can find it in your Google Drive later. Description can be a good thing too. Things you're going to need in this form, you're going to need a question that allows you to choose the student. Uh, when I see this little grid of dots, that means I can move the question around, or if I click on it, I can change attributes of the question. I could change this to different question types. Uh, the X at the end of the line means I can remove an answer, an option, or I can always add options, and I can choose whether this is required or not. Of course, it should be required to choose a student that you're evaluating. Uh, you may have noticed I've used email addresses here. That's because I would eventually like to change this form into something that emails the person receiving the feedback immediately or automatically, and in order to do that, the form has to know about the emails. Other types of questions that are good, uh, I've got a rubric here, and a rubric is considered to be a multiple choice grid. So you can add as many uh, columns as you want, and you can add as many rows as you want. What I've done is I've added a fairly expansive description of the criteria in the row, and then I've used single words in the column. Again, this is for future uh, features to this form. I also think it's a good idea to have a free flow comment area. So I've included a comment. Comment questions are paragraph type. And again, here are the options for different types of questions. And what I've also done, and this is another good uh, type of question for students, especially when they're doing peer evaluations, is a linear scale. The grid and the linear scale are particularly good because it provides that structure, that format uh, that the students need in order to keep it uh, safe, keep it a safe way of doing the evaluation and keep it fairly well defined. Um, the comments are good because you want them to actually show some of the thought they've put into these more linear or more uh, quantifiable answers like the grid and the scale. So comments are good for that. I don't like putting the comments at the end. I want them to have thought about things before they go and give them their final overall presentation. Uh, weirdly, you don't actually ever click save. You can just simply go on and use the buttons at the top. There's preview so you can see what your form looks like. This is the color palette. It's more than a color palette. That's how I got this image across the back. You can customize your image. Uh, this is for add-ons and I have not got add-ons on this form yet, but that's something to be covered in another video. Under the settings, there are some fairly important things. If I was doing this for peer evaluation of students, I would collect the email address of the person filling in the form because I want to see who wrote what and I typically will evaluate them on the evaluations. Require sign-in uh, because I'm going to use this form for my own class. I can restrict it to Crescent School users. If I were to use it for the class I teach online in which I get students from all sorts of schools, I would uncheck that. I don't want to limit to one response, especially in a peer evaluation because I'd like them to evaluate multiple people. I can set this up to be more like a quiz, but neither of these are really applicable if you're doing a student evaluation form. So I can click Save. And that is in uh, hopefully very short order, how you can set up a form. Um, I can send this to a group of students, I can send it to myself to fill out, and I can embed the form in that email, which can make it easy for them to, uh, to give the information, less likely to lose it. To see the answers, I can click on responses, and it gives me graphical information. I've only filled it in once, so this isn't that relevant or that useful. Um, and I can also go and look at the spreadsheet that it comes up with. And this is what it looks like. You can see that it pulled the words right out of the grid and the overall presentation. And I didn't write comments the first time. So I'm just going to fill this form in. I'm going to go to preview. This is what it would look like. I'm going to fill it in. At least I hope you found it understandable. I'll give myself a three out of four and I can click submit. There's a link that I can have to go back to fill this in again. Let's go back to the form itself and I can go to my worksheet, my Google Sheet rather, to take a look at my answers, at the different form responses, and you can see the rubric, the number, and the comments, as well as a timestamp as to when, when it got filled in. So in fairly short order, I hope this gives you an idea of how you could use forms to evaluate students yourself or to provide a, a good start to peer feedback. There will be other videos on using uh, add-ons to email the form out, do some calculations, and auto-fill the list of students so you don't have to manually type them in. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.